Welcome back, YouTubers, to another Friday Night Smackdown review on Friday night, of course, with us, the British Fist. Gotcha. NJ showed people the sign. That's what you want to do if you want to support the British Fist out there, everyone. Um, make sure you guys subscribe up above, of course, like this video, and comment your thoughts on the show down below. Make sure you contact us in the links in the screen box below. Yes, and as you well know, I am Mr. Parkin, wearing another V-neck, and this guy sitting next to me, well, 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 what more can I say, NJ? Just say, just do it. What? Everyone loves that, NJ! Let's just get on to this review now, because before, before I go on to this review, I just want to have a quick, there was a quick bit of news that I did want to address here. We have five releases from WWE. They've finally done this whole spring cleaning thing they were talking about. Chris Masters, David Hart Smith, Molina, Gail Kim Quip, and Kozlov. Any yeah. thoughts? No, not really. Do you think they deserve to be released? Pretty much. Not being used really, are they? No, even though Molina should have stayed, yeah. but whatever. So you might as well get rid of the dead weight, in my opinion. Um, Right, so we go on to the opener of SmackDown. An opener, we had a match. We had a match between uh, Sheamus and the great Carly. Now, Sheamus comes out to a very big face pop. Um, I think this match was done mainly to get Sheamus over as a, as a powerful baby face, in my opinion, going up against the bigger heel in Great Carly. He breaks out of a lot of holds and stuff. So I think that was the purpose of this match, really. I agree. That's basically it, really. Yeah, uh, and he wins with the bro kick. Um, we also have the main event, an a match announced for tonight, which is Orton and Morrison versus Truth and Christian. So combining two singles matches last week. Uh, what did you think of the match itself or, as an opener? It was all right. Again, Kylie doing nothing at mm -hmm. the moment and Shane is trying to get some in the WWE again. Yep. So yeah, did what it's meant to. To me, this is I, I kind of preferred this just because it wasn't an, it wasn't an opening segment. It was an opening match, which is one of the things I liked about it. And they're now establishing Sheamus as a babyface, and this is a good way of doing it, in my opinion. Um, next, we had Divas action, and in my opinion, on Raw we had a very interesting Divas segment with Beth Phoenix, and in this one, I believe Natalia made this quite interesting. It was AJ versus Natalia in a standard Divas match. Was it me or was the fucking crowd like quiet? You could barely. Well, it, it should have been that quiet because the match itself. Nothing exciting, it was just a plain match. I, I, thought it wasn't, I didn't think it was bad. I just thought teacher versus people, I thought the whole concept of that, that, that was okay. I didn't think it was a good match. But I didn't, at the same time, I didn't think it was a bad match. It was really short, I'll give that, which kind of didn't, which kind of, you know, didn't do it well. AJ basically taps to the sharpshooter. It's a relatively quick match, which Natalia wins. And then, twice. And then, well, I expected AJ to win, to be honest, the way Natalia's been booked lately, but I'm glad Natalia won because she is the better diva. Um, but the interesting thing for me was what happened after this match, because we had a Natalia heel turn, very similar to what Beth Phoenix did. I thought this was very effective. I do like this now, that some of the divas are now starting to assert their domination um, as heels now, which is good. As I've said all along, we've had too many faces, divas, and mm. it just kind of sucks. That's why we won't get much uh, new champions yeah. and that. So I think we now have two new heels, we should get new champions. Then. Yeah, I do think this as well has been done to put AJ over as a big baby face. Um, I do like Natalia in this role just because we know she's a great wrestler. We know she's dominant. So why not have her as a heel? Just to see what she does. Maybe she can do something good in the Divas Division and make the Divas Division better, kind of like I feel Beth Phoenix can do. Hopefully. Yes. Um, we then get a From the Vault segment. Usually I would say, eh, it's a From the Vault segment. But in this one, we had Chris Jericho versus CM Punk. I actually wanted to watch this match when it came on. It was a good match. Good I match. enjoyed it. Yeah. Definitely. But at the time, it was the Intercontinental Champ versus the Waterweight Champion CM Punk. So... I kind of enjoyed it in my one of the better from the vault segments that's made down there. Yeah, they yep. We then get a little vignette of Justin Gabriel uh, in South Africa showing that's Justin Gabriel second week in a row uh, as a baby face and everything. So they're really promoting him now as a baby face. I, I do like these segments just because you show him in his hometown interacting with people. And like you said last week, you know, he's on his own. He's as a singles guy now. Yeah, it's roughly the same thing what we mm. saw last week. And again, it was just showing him as a single wrestler or as on his own, which yep. is what he's going to do when he comes back into SmackDown. And yeah, it'll be good. Hopefully, he'll be getting a singles push sometime soon because I feel he does deserve it. Especially now his turn face. Yeah. That's SmackDown. He faces, as we've both been saying, for the last couple of months. That's true. Right. The next match we have is Daniel Bryan, who showcased new music, which is much better than his old music, in my opinion, versus Tyson Kidd. And we also had. Also in this match, we had Wade Barrett on commentary. Now, I liked Wade Barrett on commentary. I thought he was actually quite good. He, he was, you know, just because his typical English grip was there, and I did like his commentary. Uh, what did you think to him then the match itself? Commentary, yeah, it was good, because obviously he's got the good mic skills, and the match itself, oh, ties the kid, okay. A job. Uh, I didn't expect to see him again. I thought that would be the end of him. To put him against Daniel Bryan, I thought the match would have been quicker than what it mm. was, because, again... Daniel Bryan's a much better wrestler than Tyson mm. Kidd. 
But one, the thing is, I do like the way they're having Daniel Bryan go out there and wrestle every week for about sort of 10 minutes, just to show, because what he does best is wrestling. And I think that's what they need to showcase now, WWE. They need to showcase that he is a great wrestler. And to, and to do that, they're kind of reiterating this by giving him some jobbers, having him go out 10 minutes, putting on what I thought was a very good match with Tyson Kidd. I do feel Tyson Kidd showed while, he's, while he has a bit of a future, at least for the time being in WWE as a jobber. Um, and Bryan wins by submission, you know, continually you know, giving up the giving this gimmick that he's going to be a submission wrestler. And also we see a little bit there between Wade Barrett and Daniel Bryan. Will they be having a pay-per-view match? Will they not? Do we really know? It hasn't been announced. But but the way it teased. looks like it, it was a good thing to see Daniel Bryan versus Wade Barrett. I think that could be a good match because they yep. both have thoughts on Money in the Bank mm -hmm. and how it went. So it would be good to see if it happens. Yep, definitely. Um, the next segment we have, oh, for fuck's sake. This is kind of like Eric Young, but no, nah, not quite as bad. We have Zack Ryder doing his State of the Broski address or something, and I just got one thing to say to you, Zack Ryder. Fuck you, you! Because I fucking... Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> Don't you dare get on the Zack Ryder about my interview, so I'll smack you in the face. Woo, woo, woo. I swear. Um, you basically, know. Zack Ryder comes out, Zeke Jackson interferes and says that he didn't like Ryder putting him in a handicap match this week, and he's saying, but I thought we agreed to it, dude! I thought we agreed to it! I don't know, man. This... I'm just glad that these two didn't get that much time on the mic because then we had Cody Rhodes come out with Teddy Biasi and Cody Rhodes got the mic and all of a sudden the promo got a little bit better because promo, obviously Cody Rhodes is much better on the mic. Keyword being a little bit better yeah. because this segment weren't the greatest part of SmackDown. Well, Rhodes basically wanted to resurrect... What I liked about this promo is that Rhodes said he wanted to resurrect the image of the Intercontinental Championship belt and I know he won't but it's good that he's actually sort of let, allowing that title to sort of mean something, I guess. Um... And then we get Zeke saying that Teddy's being used by Rhodes. You know, we get with further tease of this maybe possible breakup, which I feel will happen with Ted turning babyface in the future. I do feel that needs to be done. I think the way Cody and Ted are, they've been together in the past and mm. now the present. I think now they're two wrestlers that could do good on their own if they had the right, the right direction. Yes, but yeah. I do feel that way as well about those two. Then we then get Teddy Long come out, you know, woo-woo, yeah, great. Um... Taylor Long comes out and says that Zack Ryder is not the assistant GM. Thank fuck for that, because I'm fed up with seeing him on TV this time. And that he makes Zack Ryder versus Ezekiel Jackson in a match which was just a really squash match, really, wasn't it? Three minutes of Zeke beating on Zack Ryder, which for me was fucking entertaining because I don't like Zack Ryder that much. Again, Zack Ryder in a match. Great. Mm. Just appearing on SmackDown. Zeke wins of a torture rack. And remember the clip on, on, we saw on YouTube? Triple H gave Zack a pedigree. How fucking awesome is that? We didn't see it on TV, but we saw it on YouTube. Which was a shame because it could have made SmackDown better than what it was. <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, the whole segment, I don't know what this... I guess this whole segment was trying to tease a Zeke, Cody, maybe maybe Teddy Biassi feud uh, going into the pay-per-view, but I don't really know. It's, really, it's not really too clear. Um, but anyway, we'll go on to the next match because we have, again, another match involving a jobber. Um, it was Mark Henry versus Kozlov in a squash match, and again, I did. I do like SmackDown's booking here because at least they're giving someone, at least they're giving Mark Henry a jobber, and they're not burying someone who needs to be pushed going into the pay per view, in my opinion, which I feel is quite good. Um, the match was quick, um, which it should be because Mark Henry is a dominant heel now. He is, uh, and we get Kozlov doing the whole chair thing. Kozlov getting injured and kind of making him look strong going into pay, going into SummerSlam. Yeah, because I think as we found out. Because I've got released, so yeah. I think with him having his last match losing, which is a bit of a shame, but of course he was going to lose against Mark Henry. Definitely, he did his job by pushing Mark Henry a bit further. So yeah, that's all I can really say about it. And we have the whole injury angle done, and then all of a sudden Sheamus comes in and makes a save, further solidifying that he is now a face. Um, you know, it's good to see them two interacting in a segment. I guess they're going to have a SummerSlam match as well. I do think they did mention about SummerSlam match because we have a backstage promo afterwards with Sheamus talking about how he's going. There's going to be a SummerSlam match, not officially announced. But a tease that we're probably going to get at a SummerSlam, saying that you know it's no one takes away his will and passion to win and compete in the WWE, which is good because I think with Sheamus not doing so much since he lost the WWE Championship in the past, mm. he's not been doing much. I think him having all these big words and all this trust in himself mm. and thing, I think it was good for him. It's actually going to help him get. I do somewhere. feel I do feel now that they're going to try and push Sheamus back up to the main event, especially now as a face. Especially if they make if they make Christian win the belt at SummerSlam, expect Sheamus to be in that main event. I'm just I'm calling it right now. Um, the next match we have is a tag. Oh God, six tag, six man tag match. Um, Otongo McGillicay and JTG versus the Usos and Trent Beretta. And the first thing I was thinking here is, yeah, I like tag team action. But why are JTG and Trent Barretta in it? I just don't understand. Why don't you just have a Tonga and McGillicuddy versus the Usos? Maybe even with the tag titles on the line. I don't understand that. Neither do I. I just don't understand the booking there. Um, 
the problem, the, the, you know, this match was, I guess it's okay, but it's just, you know, uh, the tag champions win, which I guess is the keeping them looking strong, but I just, I can't help but think they could have just made this a good, you know, sort of five, maybe ten minute tag team match rather than a six man match. I didn't see the point. What are these two going to do in the future, JTG and Trent Barretta? Nothing really, I don't think. The match could have been done differently again, but again, the right person's win, that's what I have to say. I just wish the fucking commentators would stop arguing though. Cole and fucking Booker T are just getting on my fucking nerves now every time they argue. This game, it's taking focus away from the match and it kind of affects the match a little bit when they're, when they're fucking arguing over bullshit, you know what I mean? Although it's quite funny though, I guess. Um, we then get, oh, the traditional Smackdown Raw recap, where we have the whole punk scene and the storyline done. Um, that's really it, isn't it? They just show a vignette, five minute vignette of the punk scene and storyline. We don't really need to see it, seriously. It's the biggest thing that's happening in the debut at the minute, mm. so I think, I know it's, it should stay on Raw, but I think showing that, again, I guess you just get more hype to that. I guess, like you said, it's probably, it's pay per view hype, I guess, so that's kind of why they used it. Um, which I guess is kind of good in a way. Uh, it's just I wish they'd do it for their own bloody show, that's all. Sometimes. But they get a backstage segment with Truth and Christian, basically talking about conspiracy theories. Another reason, like they did this on Raw, I think, or last week on SmackDown. Or this, last week on Raw, even. But they showed them as a tag team. I do like these I do like these backstage segments where they show people as a tag team because it shows they're in cahoots and, you know, they're ready for their match. So I did kind of like They did hype for the main event a little bit, I guess, which we all knew at the beginning of the night would be Orton Morrison versus Truth and Christian. Yeah, it did its job. It got them interacting mm -hmm. and showing that they were uh, going to get involved and in partnership in the match. So, yeah. Yeah. Randy Orton, go and get Gap! That's pretty much Yeah, pretty much. Jam Morrison, go and get Gap! They're both going to get Gap! Nah. Well, we'll see what happens in this match because next we have the main event segment, uh, the main event match even, uh, tag team match. This is one problem I think I have with SmackDown at the moment. You have their main event, which involves probably the four biggest guys they've got on this got on there at the moment. Why can't these be spread throughout the show a little bit more? It just shows their lack of roster, really, doesn't it? And their lack of star power, that they have everything in the main event, and then everything in the undercard is all jobbers and stuff. Do you know what I mean? Pretty much, yeah. Hmm. Your you thoughts like, on the match? The thing is, they've got... They're having to use R-Truth and Morrison on SmackDown hmm. again. Sin Cara and... Um, I guess Big Show and Kane are all out, I guess. Yeah, but I'm thinking, really, mm. they're Raw wrestlers. To bring them to SmackDown, you don't really have SmackDown wrestlers going to Raw anymore. They've mm. stopped doing that, thank God. And now I'm just saying, the match itself, it showed back and forward between all wrestlers, so I kind of give it mm. a thumbs up to that. I thought this was a decent main event as well. I, I, I can see what your point about Morrison and Truth being on SmackDown, but I guess at the same time, it's kind of, because Morrison's now returning, I guess they want to showcase him on TV, even if they're going to make him fucking lose every time. Uh, so I guess it's kind of showcasing two feuds in one, the two sort of one main feud from SmackDown and mid card feud from Raw. Um, you know, the great thing about this match, I thought, was the end. You know, you had Christian pin the champion, which I think makes him look uh, Christian pin Orton, which I think makes him look strong. Um, and the fact that and the fact that Orton didn't end the show on top kind of makes this a fucking excellent segment, in my opinion. Okay, but we have SummerSlam coming up when we have Christian versus mm. Warren. We don't really want to see them in a match uh, get pinning each other. We it could have been that. done differently. Yeah, I'm mm. thinking we're expecting to see this at SummerSlam, yeah. and you're showing it on a SmackDown. Yeah, I do. I do know what you mean, but at the same time. I do like the fact that Orton didn't end the night strong because he fucking does it all the time. And to have Christian walking out strong was good for me. I did like that. I just did. I just had a bit of a problem with the pinning. Uh, they could have maybe pinned what John Morrison again, buried him yeah, again. Buried you might Morrison. as well. You've done it twice. You might do it a fucking third time. That's the point. Or yeah. end the match in a disqualification. I prefer John Morrison getting pinned. Nah, I think disqualification would have been better. He's, he's been getting buried, so I think with him coming on SmackDown, he's doing no better than what he does on Raw. Yeah. So, or do you feel that they're making him John Morrison lose so they can have him win his per first pay per view match back, make him like a real underdog, or do you feel they're just really burying him at the moment? Which 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 side do you side on here? I think they're burying him because he should come back and actually look mm. ready for the paper. Like yeah. he's still got what he had before he left. He's still got his charisma. He's still got all that uh, moves and that. He should have shown that and still win some matches before the pay per view. I agree with you there. I do agree with you. That's my thoughts exactly. Um, overall thoughts on the show, main event on the show. Okay, overall, not the best match in my opinion. There was again compared to other weeks, this one had quite a few places where I would have improved, would have mm. changed. I'm thinking that the way they've done it, they gave us a, another heel diva, which divas need. They gave us a build of Daniel Bryan actually looking good and continuous submission moves and that. Mm -hmm. They Again, they've done the whole working two things in one, like the whole uh, 
showing up ten Cody could break up as well as the Cody and Zeke thing going on. So too many things going at once. Then come to the main event. I think again there's bits in that like there John Morrison and R Truth fighting a lot in that match and I'm thinking that we should be saving some of this for the pay per view. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna say that the way it finished we didn't have the faces coming on top, which was pretty good, but at the same time John Morrison did get more buried, which is not good for him. It's nice to have the heels come out on top in a main event tag match for once, isn't it? Um, my overall thoughts on this show are the fact that I do think their booking is getting a little bit better. I do like the fact that they're actually not, they're using jobbers a bit more now on SmackDown because it actually gives people a push, going, the right people going to a push going well, to debut, like Daniel Bryan and Mark Henry. But, but at the same time, they are burying people like John Morrison. And the reason they're using jobbers is because they haven't really got anyone else to exactly. use. So exactly. If they had other wrestlers, they wouldn't have to use jobbers. Yeah. But Exactly. This this is goes on to my next point, though. I did like the, the whole booking with the jobbers and everything, but the show itself really did lack some sort of X factor because we don't really see good matches there. We see jobbers. Although the booking is good, the book it lacks it the booking was good, but because the booking was good in my opinion, it lacked an ent it lacked entertainment. And that was the problem with this week's SmackDown. It was decent booking. You had everyone looking you had everyone correct looking strong, apart from maybe John Morrison. Um and you know, there was some bad booking in some matches, but a bit of an improvement in booking, just lack of entertainment and a lack of X Factor on SmackDown, which they really are lacking at the moment because of the main event stars and the lack of roster. Well, the problem is, it's about now coming up towards a week before the yeah. pay per view. They should have it more. It's only one match announced, two matches. Well, that's the one problem. The other thing, they should get more excited yeah. and more like, oh, this is good. But this SmackDown, you didn't really come out of it with a bigger positive bearing mm. because obviously there was job so you know that yeah. the other person's going to win so but at least they look strong though that's the one positive I can take from that at least the right guys look stronger in the pay-per-view the guys that are actually booked probably strong against job okay, and we've yeah. seen some possible rivalries there even though the storylines are a bit weak in my opinion but they, they always are on Smackdown they are yeah mm. okay then is that all you got to say what would you rate this show overall uh, give it a grade C yeah C yeah I'll give it C plus just because I, like I said, I did like the booking, but it lacked a lot tonight in entertainment and in, and in you know a full a full roster which someone like Raw can actually offer you, in my opinion. So it's a C. It wasn't the best of entertainment, but the booking is improving, I guess, a little bit. Just that SmackDown's problems are really emulated in this show, um, even though they've improved the booking, in my opinion. Um, any last thoughts before we go on to the? Uh, goodbye section of the video that's it okay thank you very much for watching guys make sure you comment your thoughts on smackdown down below in that comment section that has been up from the, that has been it from me mr parkin wearing the v-neck of course and nj beside me what's up as enthusiastic as usual with his what's up gimmick there that he stole from our truth when he was a face but he's a heel so now we can use it that's it from us thank you very much for watching goodbye <laughs>